Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are solving the maximum deflection of a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load across the entire span. We want to figure out what that max deflection is, and it will be occurring right in the center of the beam at a distance of L over 2 from either side. Um, so yeah, let's get started with this. The way that we solve this is we would do some very elementary statics to draw the free body diagram. We can just draw it right on the drawing here. Uh, where we'll find that Ra is going to be equal to one half WL, and then Rb would also be equal to one half WL, right? Just W times L, we're splitting that up because of the symmetry. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out our sum of forces in the Y direction for a cut, for a section basically that has a virtual cut in it. So with our free body diagram here, we can figure out that V is going to be equal to 1 half WL minus WX. All right, we can use the same diagram here to get an expression for, uh, for our internal moment because we will be needing that when we fill out our equation here in the next step, which is going to be D squared Y over dx squared is equal to that moment in terms of x over ei. All right, so we need this moment in terms of x, and we can get it uh, for this span um, based off of this diagram that we have here. So we have 1 half wlx minus 1 half wx squared. Okay, cool. Let's put a little box around this because that is uh, that's pretty important to what we're doing. This is our expression for m, which we're going to plug in up here. Okay, so let's rearrange this, and then again, uh, same as last video, we're going to integrate it twice. Cool. So we want to integrate this. We'll integrate both sides, which means we integrate basically each term from zero to x. Uh, in terms of x, so we can just, instead of writing all the integration signs, I'll just skip that and we'll just say that this is equal to ei times dy dx. The integral of the second derivative is just the first derivative. Uh, and then when we integrate this stuff with respect to x, we get x squared, that's a wl, and this all gets put over, maybe I'll just uh, clean that up a little bit, uh, this all gets put over 1 fourth. All right, and then minus here, we'll have, again, 1 fourth wx cubed. Actually, we're not going to have a fourth there. We're going to have a sixth, just like that. And then we also get our leftover integration constant. So integration constants, this is a perfect time to bring up the fact that we need some boundary conditions. So let's maybe draw out these in a different color. Uh, we have our boundary conditions. We know that because this is physically constrained here at x equals zero, the displacement, the, the displaced version, which is gonna, you know, come down something like that, right? Uh, there's no displacement right here at a, so we say that y is equal to zero. And then at x is equal to l, we have the same thing. Y is equal to zero. So we have two sets of boundary conditions here. We have one set there and one set there. Now if you remember, we have uh, the derivative of y dy dx is the same thing as just this slope, uh, and the way that we often write that is as uh, theta. So we can just replace that with a theta here. And uh, this expression here is going to be pretty important, so we'll just throw a green box around it so we can find it easily later. All right, but what we want to do is we want to continue going on. We want to integrate this again. We actually can't solve for what C1 is because this has uh, a theta in it where our boundary conditions are purely x's and y's. Uh, if you watched the last video, one of the boundary conditions included the theta, so we could do that. But here we're going to have to go keep going until we get to y, uh, and then and you'll see how to do it then. So we're going to integrate uh, every term, basically both sides of the equation, so we can just go term by term. So we have ei, the integral of dy dx is just y. Same thing, integral of theta is y because theta is equal to dy dx. Now in this part, we will have wl x cubed, three times four is 1 12th, uh, minus, here we have 
wx to the power of 4, so that will be 1 24th. And then we'll have c1x, and then we'll get in our other integration constant. Here we have c2. All right, let's throw a green box around this guy because, again, this is basically our expression for y. Uh, we just need to figure out our c1s and c2s here. So the first way that we're going to do that is I'm going to plug in the first set of boundary conditions. So for every x in this part, I'll set it to 0. And then for every y, I will set to 0 as well because x equals 0, y equals 0. So the way that we do that, maybe I'll call this, um, just so we can keep track of it, I'll call this a. This is boundary condition set A and boundary condition set B. So for A, um, we have E, I, Y goes to 0. Uh, this x is 0 minus 0 minus 0 plus C2. So we're going to find out that C2 is equal to 0. Let's go and throw a box around that because that is one of our boundary conditions. Now let's go back and we'll plug in boundary condition set B here into this same expression. So we have B, uh, so we have at x equals L, y equals 0. So we get E, I, y, so that's 0, is equal to 1 12th W, L, and so for x equals L, so we're going to have L cubed, and I'm going to rewrite that as L to the power of 4 minus 1 over 24 w, we're subbing the l there, so l to the power of 4, plus c1 times l, is that c1 times x, and we know that c2 is 0, so plus 0. Okay, so this whole side goes to 0. We have 1 12th and minus 1 24th, so that's 2 24ths minus 1 24th. That will give us... Uh, basically one, uh, 2 24ths minus 1 24th, yeah, so that'll give us 1 24th WL4 plus C1L is uh, all equal to 0, so we'll bring that over to the other side, and we'll get C1L is equal to negative 1 24th WL4, and we'll just divide 1L out from each side, and so we get C1 is equal to negative WL4 cubed, so that's negative 1 24th, WL cubed. All right, so let's go put a blue box around that. That is our other integration constant that we have solved. Now what we want to do, so we have C1, we have C2, we want to plug them into these expressions here where C1 and C2 occur. So we just put in C1 here because it's up in this expression, and then we put in C1 times x here coming from there, and C2 is just 0, so we don't need to write that anymore. Um, now what we want to do is the point of this video was to find the maximum deflection or the deflection at uh, the midpoint, which is uh, L over 2. So what we can do is we have this expression now for that includes y. So if we just rearrange that a little bit, we'll just get y is equal to 1 over ei. Uh, and it's times all this stuff. And let's just copy that because it's faster. Um, so times all that stuff, and then we'll close the bracket. All right, so we're looking for, we want to figure out the, the midpoint so that we want to figure out at x equals l over 2. All right, x equals l over 2, right in the middle there. Um, so if we plug in x equals l over 2 to each of these instances of x, we're going to find that y is equal to 1 over ei times 1 12th times W L L over 2 all cubed minus 1 over 24 times W times L over 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 over 24 W L cubed times L over 2. So we'll get y is equal to 1 over ei times, this will become 1 over 96, like that, wl to the power of 4. 
this will be minus 1 over 384 WL to the power of 4 and minus 1 over 48 times WL to the power of 4. So we can uh, we can simplify that and we'll just get 1, or sorry, y is equal to 1 over EI times uh, negative 5 over 384 times WL4. And uh, we can kind of just simplify that, that the y at, at x equals L over 2, the cleanest way that we should write that would be this is equal to negative 5 WL to the power of 4 over 384 EI. So that, uh, let me just put a box around that, that is the maximum deflection that we're experiencing uh, in the simply supported beam and it's happening at a distance of x equals L over 2 so the max deflection in terms of W and L is this uh, if you had the actual numbers if you had you know if you had values for L and you had values for EI and W uh, we'd actually be able to calculate this in millimeters but often you're asked just to put it in this form